In the previous video, I showed how to define geometry for this flat plate with a circular hole and, some, and two notches on the edges. <clears throat> this continues on from that and looks at modeling this option here, the, which involves assigning the material, um, structural steel, uh, generating a mesh for the finite element analysis, applying uh, loads, fixing, um, defining supports and running the analysis and looking at the output from it. So to start up the mechanical module, which is part of the suite of ANSYS programs, you double click on mod model. Uh, okay, it's, it's, I made some changes there. So it's just saying it needs to pick up the latest geometry. So I've said to do that. Um, it takes a few seconds to start this, so I'll skip the, the wait time. And so if we see this is the, the model that we, the geometry that we set up. So if we first of all look uh, over here at the, the various options, the first thing if we look at ge geometry, there's a solid uh, body defined, which is, uh, and we look down here, the material being assigned has, by default is structural steel. If we click on that, we can change it to concrete or aluminium, which are the two materials that I added into the project earlier in the previous video. But um, changing the material won't make a difference to the stress analysis because it's a linear elastic stress analysis. But um, obviously it would change the deformation, the strain. And But we'll stick with structural steel for now. OK. Uh, the coordinate systems, that's just where I defined the... the uh, the origin and the x, y, z axes. Now, if you look at the next option, we have to finite element analysis is based on, on dividing up a structure into small finite elements. Uh, and that's called meshing or dividing, creating a mesh. Um, if we go straight to solving the problem, it'll automatically generate a mesh, but the, we usually have to look at the mesh and refine it and it may not be adequate. But let's look at the, by right clicking on that and just hitting generate mesh, we'll see what um, what the default mesh is and we'll see what that looks like. Okay, it's giving a message about poor quality down here. If you double click on that message um, and suggests adjusting size controls. Okay, so but even looking at that, it's clearly not that not that good. Around the we're looking at stress concentrations around these notches, and there's only two elements um, at the face of that notch here. On the thickness here, there's only one element in the thickness. Okay, it's a bit different up there. Um, okay, so we need to refine it. So the first thing, if we click on mesh and look down here, the sizing. And um, one basic way you can change it is change what they call the relevant center from the default is a coarse mesh so let's switch to fine it says now the obsolete the, the, the that current mesh that mesh is obsolete and we need to regenerate it so if we do that again we see what the effect of that is okay so it's a, a finer mesh it's it's not bad it's better certainly or it's fine for the 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 regions here remote from the stress concentrations but even still at the concentration at the notches and that's the, the whole, they're not particularly good. So we want a much finer mesh, much more elements around there to pick up, you know, the fairly in, uh, sharp gradient in in the stress concentrations. Now to do that, there's various ways of doing it, but we can insert what's called a refinement. Okay, or we can go up to mesh control and also click on refinement. And the refinement then says this yellow highlight down here says well what what geometry do you want to apply the refinement to so we're going to need to select I want to select the inside surface of the hole and the, the circular surface of of the two notches now to do that we need to go up to here and there's various selection options you can select a vertex an edge we want to select a face okay so I'm going to click on that and the cursor changes to that so i'm going to click on that and it highlights it green holding down the control key and click on that all right so i've selected two surfaces now i need to rotate it around 
here to select the, this. So I need to go back to selecting faces, holding down the control key again and click that. We now have three faces selected. Um, okay. So, uh, and we come over to geometry, click on that and click apply. They, those three surfaces go blue, uh, turn blue, blue or purple, and the refinement here is is identified. Now the refinement, there are three levels of refinement. We can uh, one, two, or three, and three is the most refined. So uh, if we do that, and now generate the mesh again, and we'll see what happens. Takes a few seconds. It has a bit of work to do here. It's generating quite a few uh, elements. Now, if I look at there, we'll see what's happened. Lots of elements around the the, the refinement. Okay, the three refinements that I had put in. It's a three-dimensional mesh as well. If I zoom in, uh, do a box zoom on that, you can see what's happening there. Okay, lots of elements to to pick up the variation, the sharp variation in stress. Go back to the full zoom to fit that icon there. And now I'm, I'm fairly happy with that. In a typical analysis, you define a mesh, you run the analysis, you see uh, how uh, the, what the stress gradients are like, where the concentrations are. You may come back and refine it again if you wish, but this should be okay for our purposes. Okay, so now click on static structural. The mesh temporarily disappears, but it is still there. Uh, now, in this, I want to um, define a support and loading. Now, I want to, it's a cantilever basically. This oh, is a little bit tricky to rotate these things. Okay. Now, I want to apply, make this face here a fixed support. So, again, there are different ways of doing it. There's drop down here, there's fixed support. Um, I need to select a face. And come down to geometry, uh, this details of this fixed support again. Apply, select this geometry again. It's fixed, it shows blue that it is that. Okay, so we have a support. So it's a cantilever beam. So on this face, the, the, at the other end, I want to apply a, an axial force in tension and I want to apply a bending moment. I'm going to look at the two effects of the two separately, but for now, I will apply, I will define both of them. Okay, so structural. So again, I can right click and insert forces, also supports. Um, so, or I can just go into loads here and apply a force. Okay, now again, it comes up uh, what geometry do you want to define it to? So, select that face and apply it. Okay, now a force um, is a vector, and by definition, um, applying a force to a surface or a face. It automatically puts it, applies it at right angles, normal to the, the surface. Okay, so I can define my units. So just check my units down there in the bottom right hand corner, millimeters and newtons. Okay, so my f I want to apply 560 kilonewtons. So 560,000 newtons. And the arrow appears there showing that yes, it's in tension. We can now apply a moment to the same surface. So if we go again to loads, moment, select the surface, apply this geometry selection. Now it's easier to define a moment, I think, in terms of components. The vector, you've, it's, it's a bit more, slightly more unpredictable how, what direction or what axis. So we, we've better control if we select components now I want to do a 15 kilonewton meter anti-clockwise moment about the z-axis and an mz. So that's 15 that's 15 e6, 15 by 10 to the 6 newton millimeters. And if we look at that, again that looks that looks fine. So we have the force there, the moment there. We can look at or the overall static structural. If we look at that, we see everything, the fixed support, the force, and that. Okay, so the moment is, and that all looks fine. 
Okay, so I'm happy with that. For the moment, I'm going to suppress the force because I just want to, in this video, concentrate on the effect of the bending moment. So if we right click on the force and do suppress, a little X appears and it doesn't take part in the analysis. <clears throat> so we're now ready to do the, to, to, to analyze the, to solve the system. So we can click on solve up here to do that. But before we do that, we usually want to see what's going to appear, what kind of results are we looking for. So if we click on solution, the to, the toolbar changes to list various things like deformation. So we could pick the total deformation. That's one thing we might want to look at. Uh, the, to the normal stress, perhaps the, the principal stress, maybe the von Mises, von Mises stress, which is about um, failure criteria. There's lots of options here. Okay, if we look at the normal stress and look down here, it says it's in oriented in the x axis. We can change it x, y, or z, but it is. If we look at the here, the x axis is the longitudinal axis, and that's we want the longitudinal normal stress. So that looks pretty okay. Um, so if we now just right click on the solution there and say solve. <coughs> It comes up with a progress window down here. It can take a few minutes, so I'll pause. I'll, I'll skip the this. So <clears throat> that is now finished. Uh, we have green ticks all here. Uh, everything correct. If we look down here, we have uh, graphs. We'll see what that means in a second. But if we look at messages. If there were any error messages, it would have stopped and given them. So. It looks good. So if we just click on total deformation and we see this, okay. Now we can do there, we can show, we can show the elements on it like that. We can sw switch off by sitting no wireframe. If we look at graph here, we can animate this. So that looks at how it, it moves, it's, it can be useful. I mean, it's, it's 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 the effect of the load being applied gradually. So we press stop. So this is total deformation in millimeters. Maximum is four millimeters, and that's out here. Okay, so we could check that, but but it's useful to look at the deformed shape like that to see is the support, the fixed support working okay, is the the displacement, the deformation happening in the way we'd expect it, and it's an anti-clockwise moment, so yes, it is. So that's all good. <coughs> this is, um, okay, the normal stresses. Now we can, it by default, it shows it on the deformed shape, but it's sometimes easier to, to think about it on the, in the, on the undeformed shape, so that just shows us there. Now this is the classic bending um, stress diagram. If we look at the, the units of megapascal, the maximum 283. So if we click on max, it'll show us, okay, that's occurring just there, the min. So it's numerically a minimum, it's minus 281. So that's compression. Tension is positive, compression is negative. So compression up at the top, tension at the bottom, because it's an anti-clockwise moment. <coughs> okay, so we can uh, in the next video, we look at paths and how we can plot the kind of variation of stress down through it. But but for now, we'll just use this probe um, tool to to focus in and to look at um, some of the. So I'm going to zoom here, and this is the area where there's no stress concentration. And if we look at that, and at the top, the very top elements, fourteen. If you come down here, it, it hard to see but it's decreasing it's around zero around there and down at the bottom it's <coughs> tension of 114 newtons per square millimeter compression of that zero at the neutral axis now i've done the the theoretical calculations on that or the basic calculations the maximum away from holes and notches here um, we expect the, the standard m over z or m y over i so 114.8 is the theoretical so pretty good 114.4 okay so now if you look at the, the 
full structure and then we'll look at the around the oh <coughs> around the whole to, to look at the stress stress distribution there okay so we we'll put the probe there maybe and put um we need to, to zoom in a bit um rotate this like this maybe like that and probe some of the results here to see where we're getting 279 280 okay the theory predicts 289 so it's fairly close um if we just look in there and again focusing on this area here we see if we can probe it there's a relatively low well roughly the nominal stress there 114 is the the stress in the out here away from the this is uh, around 114 okay around here it's, it's similar to that but here there's a a, a local maximum around here so that's um 192 maybe maybe okay and that corresponds with the, the theory which says a point c here it's expecting the theory is expecting um to be about 195 okay which is equal to the nominal stress at a there's a slight reduction in stress at a compared to what you'd expect but at c it's um that so at b there's a twice the, the expected nominal stress okay so that's 289 and compared to 280 281 so pretty close <coughs> And then finally, we look at the the zoom in on the notches. Um, we rotate it uh, down this way. Have a look at that and zoom in on that and probe that and see what the the, the values are: two sixty, two seventy, two seventy two. The theory is saying at the notch again, it's somewhat approximate. The stress reading the the stress concentration from the chart 2.1 gives a maximum of 288 okay so it's a little bit different 272 we're not getting that exactly but it's fairly close i couldn't zoom in there again and try and pick a, a bigger i'm not sure that there that that looks like the the biggest again we look in the next video at plotting a, a the variation along a path <clears throat> so 272 versus 288 so not too bad um, again, the theory is not exactly necessarily correct. It's uh, approximation. The, um, as is this. Okay. Now to remove all these probes, it's not. Yeah, you can switch on and off the max and min easily. Um, you would think intuitively if, if you clicked on probe, switch it off, they disappear, but they don't. So you have to go up to here and, and click on this label our imported objects label and click on that, and then highlight each of them in turn and hit delete to get rid of them a bit awkward but <coughs> okay so uh, the principal stresses um similar values 284 um the max and min max there the min over there okay the and there'd be stress concentrations at the support that mightn't be that accurate the variation you know that at the support so uh, <coughs> you expect in fact the principal stresses here to be um i think about why that's zero but uh, this corresponds with the okay. So maximum principal stress. Okay, we also probably need to look at the minimum principal stress. So we could insert insert into that stress um, the minimum principal stress. Now, if you insert something new like that, it doesn't show it straight away. But you can just um, that's the maximum. To see the minimum, the right click on it and evaluate all the results. It doesn't necessarily it doesn't have to do the full solve again. It picks them up. So the minimum here, and if we probe that, yeah. 
So that's it's the minimum is zero at the bottom. It's the opposite of, of the maximum. Okay. And the equivalent von Mises stresses are shown there, which again are similar. They're they're positive stresses, um, and they're the there's a failure criterion based on for some materials based on those stresses where those are maximum is <coughs> where the material will fail first okay so um and that summarizes that what's the, the analysis for bending moment the next video looks at the effect of the axial force and also as i said plotting paths to look at the variation maybe through here or along a, a line here um along along the top surface there of, of to see how the stress varies.